It's been called the fastest growing sport in America, and this weekend, the best of the best in pickleball are here in Central Texas. Guys, good Thursday morning. I'm Jeff Jones, joined by my good friend Tyler Feldman. We made it down here to Dreamland in Dripping Springs, and we're here for something called the Pritchard Cup. Yeah, Jeff, the Pritchard Cup, it's a pickleball tournament named after the father of the sport. And this pickleball tournament is all about playing pickleball. Joel Pritchard, a congressman from Washington State and two other dads invented this game in 1965 to entertain their kids who were bored with the usual summertime games. The result, pickleball, a sport that combines elements of tennis, badminton, and ping pong. And this may surprise you, but despite the name, this game has nothing to do with those kosher deals. And look, even though pickleball is compared to tennis and badminton, it is still its own sport, Jeff. The racket mm -hmm. size is different, and uh, so is the ball. They don't use a tennis ball, as you can see. It's nope. kind of like a wiffle ball instead. And another key difference is the court size. Oh. A tennis court for doubles is 78 feet by 36 feet, but a pickleball court is significantly smaller. It's the same size as a doubles badminton court, which is 40 feet hmm. by 78 feet, and the size is the same for men's and women's singles and doubles. Yeah, and speaking of men's and women's singles and doubles, we're going to see some of the best men and women players right here in Dreamland. 32 of the top players in the world are here, 16 men and 16 women, and they're going to play here starting tomorrow, all fighting for, Tyler, catch this, a $150,000 prize. Tyler and I actually hopped on the court to try out our skills earlier. Um, they're decent, but I don't think they're $150,000 skills yet. <laughs> I'd play for that much, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. I would play for that much. Now, the first competition will feature eight teams in the women's and men's tournament, the singles tournament, as well as for doubles and mixed doubles. Our good friend Emily John Greco actually spoke to some of those players looking to win it all. Hey, guys. We are here at Dreamland, and I'm joined by Vivian David. Are you ready to play some pickleball? Absolutely. Always. Um, oh, it's it's going down. <laughs> it's going down. There's going to be some competition up here at KU. It's going down. Wait, but really, will you take it easy on me? Because I'm not that good. Of course. Okay, okay. <laughs> so how did you get into playing pickleball? My dad owns a tennis and pickleball store down in South Florida. I stopped playing tennis. I grew up playing a lot of tennis. It took me about two years to get into it before he, I started actually playing. But ever since then, I have not looked back. <laughs> how many years have you been playing? Competing, it's been about two years. Actually playing is probably three years when I started to kind of play around with pickleball. What were your first thoughts when you started playing this game? This can get intense. Um, so I started practicing more for it and I'm like, hey, it kind of gave me the fix of playing tournaments again. I was able to compete at a higher level again, which was fun. I really miss that. So let's actually keep score now. We're, we're gonna play up to five. Somebody's getting nervous. Nice. So you can come to the kitchen. <laughs> well, look, I'm not quitting my day job anytime soon because I have no future in pickleball, but thank you so much for spending the day You're with so us. welcome. Teaching me and talking with me and letting us and all of Central Texas get to know more about you. My pleasure, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Emily. Well, guys, now that you know a little bit about some of the players from this quickly growing sport, we want to introduce you to, to the big boss, the boss of bosses, the commissioner, Miss Jenny Klitsch, runs Major League Pickleball. And, and Jenny, we know that this sport is quickly growing. It's the fastest growing sport in the world. Right. What's drawing so many people to pickleball? You know, it's an addictive sport. You get out there and you play and you just want to keep playing. I can't tell everybody go out, try to play it. You'll, you won't put it down. You'll just love the sport. And it's easy to learn. It's good for all ages. Families can play together. 
But I'm telling you, the level of play that you'll see out here is like nothing you can get anywhere else in the world. The pros are out here, the best of the best. And Jenny, you said it's good for all ages. Something that shocked me is that we have pros who are as young as 14 years old and as old as in their 70s. I shouldn't say as old, as experienced, as wise as in their 70s. This is a sport that is good for the old, the young, people who are very mobile, people who are in wheelchairs. It's accessible to everyone. It, it really is. And it is a sport that uh, all has all levels for tournament play. It has recreational play. It has family play. There's leagues. Folks can get involved at their local uh, public parks. They can get involved at a club. Um, I urge them just go get a paddle, get a ball. It doesn't require a lot of money. Go out there and play. But if you want to come see how it's really done, please come mm. out to Dreamland and see how these pros are doing it because you just can't tell from the TV how, how good these players are. Yeah, and when you do watch from the TV, because I know you will, you're going to see the talent on the court. But what you might not see with your eyes, you're going to hear right now with your ears, is about what this league is doing off the court. Your real goal is, is equality throughout the league. Yeah, I mean, we have some mantras, and we are, one of our core principles is equality. Uh, this is one of the few sports that started from the ground up with men and women competing together mm -hmm. at the same events, not separate tours. And the men and women's matches in the Major League Pickleball event will count equally. They will be paid equally. They will be on center court equally. There will be mixed doubles where they'll play together. So um, equality and equal pay is just really who we are. Uh, we don't really know how to do it any differently and we think it's 2021 and that's how, mm -hmm. it, how it should be. And we're really looking forward to the player support as we grow both this league and the sport. Love it, love it. Thank you so much for your time and, and for what you guys are doing, spreading the sport and spreading equality. And guys, uh, I'm going to save you a trip to, to Google. I'm going to brag on Jenny for a second. Number one ranked senior tennis player in the in the nation or in the world? In the world. In the world. <laughs> so guys, she knows what she's talking about and she's spreading this sport that is definitely worth it. We'll be right back after this with plenty more pickleball knowledge to drop on you from Dreamland. Pickleball is the fastest growing sport in America, but it's a new sport, so we want you to learn more about pickleball, some of the important rules and ways in which to play the game. So to help me out, I brought in two experts, Deco Barr, professional pickleball player, and Drew DeHennis, pickleball referee, and he also plays social. Drew, first things first, you have to be able to serve. Correct. And the point starts with the server who will always start on the right side of the court. And the serve must be served diagonally to the opposite court uh, and must clear what's known as the non-volley zone uh, completely to the opposite side. Uh, the traditional serve is just the ball is released from one hand and hit in an underhand motion with your paddle hand uh, with an upward motion. They have introduced a second type of serve where you can actually drop the ball, allow it to bounce, and then serve to the opposite side of the court. I'm Tyler, he's Drew, and Drew, what else should we know about playing pickleball? So another rule that's somewhat unique to pickleball is commonly referred to as the double bounce rule. What that means is the first two shots of the point have to bounce on the court before they can be played. So the serve must bounce before the receiving team can return it, and then when the receiving team hits their first ball, that also must bounce before the serving team hits it. After that point, the ball can be played on the bounce or out of the air either way. This rule actually provides a slight advantage to the receiving team because they will typically be the first team to get to the non-volley zone line where they then have the advantage during the rest of the point. And welcome back. We are live at Dreamland in Dripping Springs ahead of Major League Pickleball's Pritchard Cup, a professional tournament happening on these courts this weekend. Now, Jeff, we know Austin is booming. Lots of growth. The demand for land, of course, then, is skyrocketing, mm -hmm. so that makes it tough. Where are they going to build these pickleball courts? That's the question that everyone's looking to answer, and lucky for us and you, we have KVU's Jake Garcia, who went to the Parks and Rec Department and private business owners to find those answers. I'm here at Hancock Rec Center where sites like this are pretty common. Pickleball courts sharing the same space as other courts. It's the city's way of getting creative. They're meeting the need for a growing pickleball appetite while also not having to shell out cash for new land. Pickleball courts have also been combined with tennis courts like the ones here at South Austin Rec Center. Ricardo Solis with the Austin Parks and Rec Department tells me that trend is here to stay. 
it's cost effective for us. Um, building a tennis court itself can start anywhere from $50,000 if you have the real estate. Converting it to another use or multi-use is, is ideal for us. Now across the rest of Central Texas, you'll find more pickleball specific courts. Cedar Park is home to these outdoor ones at Veterans Memorial, but if it's a rainy day like today, these indoor ones here at the rec center might be your best bet. They've been here for just under a decade and memberships start at $15. Meanwhile, the Central Texas Ambassador for USA Pickleball lives up here in Georgetown. He tells me in addition to these state of the art courts, there are quite a few more on the way. We started with four courts. They built two more. Right now they're in the construction of building 16 outdoor lighted courts. Be ready in time for Christmas, we hope, with room for 10 more. And while we're on the topic of construction, this is our stadium court back here. The space problem that Austin faces could soon be solved. We're going to have 33 pickleball courts. I think it's going to be a really uniquely Austin place. Tim Klitsch set to make Austin Pickle Ranch the biggest pickleball setup in the state. They plan to break ground at the start of next year. For KVU News, I'm Jake Garcia. Well, thank you, Jake. And, you know, I'm glad that they are starting to build more pickleball courts around town because this sport is fun. And, you know, we want everybody all across Central Texas to have at least one or two courts nearby. Tyler, you and I hopped on the court behind <laughs> us uh, just a few moments ago, and, and we had a lot of fun. We thought we were going to play for like two or three minutes. We were on there for like 30. Yeah, it's a blast. I mean, Jenny talked about how addicting it is. You get out there yeah. and you realize, hey, it's, it's a sport that everyone can play. I think that's the best part about it. It's a mm -hmm. sport that does not require a whole lot. Like, that's why you see the range in ages. And yeah. So much fun once you get out there and you're swinging the paddle, going back and forth. It's like, give me more, give me more. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I'm getting some last minute practice <laughs> in right here. You need it. Because on the other side of the break, <laughs> Tyler and I are going to team up and we're going to play against the pros. We're going to take a swing at this old pickleball thing. You stay right there and we'll show you what we got. Okay, at this point, you know the drill. Drew, Tyler, Drew, what about the non volley zone? On this court, the red painted zone is considered the non-volley zone. Well, the non-volley zone is another thing somewhat unique to pickleball. There's an area typically painted a different color on many courts that's seven feet back from the net. It's called the non-volley zone, uh, commonly referred to as the kitchen. A player cannot hit a ball out of the air prior to the ball bouncing or volleying Football. with any contact into the non-volley zone by any part of his feet paddle. Uh, that also includes their momentum after volleying a ball. So while hitting the ball or their momentum afterwards, a player cannot make contact with the surface of the non-volley zone or it's a fault and loss of rally. Back here in Dreamland, he's Drew. I'm Tyler. We're talking pickleball and Drew, you can't win if you don't know how to keep score. Zero, zero, two. Correct. And scoring tends to be a bit of a challenge to learn for beginners, but most games are played to 11 points. The winning margin has to be by two. Uh, each team will typically have both players serve uh, and continue to serve until they lose a rally. And very important is that you only score points if you win a rally when your team is serving. Guys, welcome back to Dreamland. I'm Jeff Jones, and you can see in the background my friend Tyler Feldman is stretching. That's for good reason. As promised, we are going two on two, K-View against the pros. I'm joined by my new friends right here. This is uh, Rob Nunnery, pro pickleball player, Deco Bar, pro pickleball player, and Dave Fleming, the world's top pickleball play-by-play -play man. So we got the world's best right here on one court, and uh, we'll see how we match up. Tyler, you were a little better than me when we played earlier, so I'm gonna let you serve. I'm going to drop back, and uh, KVU viewers, I know y'all are rooting for the good guys, right? Yeah, let's, let's rock and roll here. I'll say the score is zero, zero, 2 It's on, guys. Oh, that's you, Tyler. Get it over. Oh. Ah. There we go. This is going way better. Oh, oh there we go. KVU, the upset right. is brewing. A little yeah, next tape. Next time we do that, is that for $150,000? That's, that's, why, that's why I'm out here today. Yeah. I'm out here the cash. Switch right. sides, so, the, the gentlemen. Side. So we got to switch. Okay. okay, so does that mean I serve or you zero, serve? 0-1-2. One, 1-0-2. Two. One, two. One, you that, score. Dave, and that's why you're out here. Exactly. <laughs> you're out here. One zero two. Let's do it again, Tyler. Ah. That is why you got to get in the right box. Yeah, oh, we didn't communicate. Yeah. We didn't communicate. Uh, serve was wide. The serve was wide. Jeff, you, you were right. Tyler was okay. wrong. Okay. It's on me. Zero, zero, oh, zero, one, one. Zero, one, one. 
All right, sent it right back to Raw. Oh, oh, so close, so oh. close. Tyler, I'll let you go get we've down. Got, we've got a man down. Get back up. We've got a man down. He's going to be all right. You knock me down, I get right back up. I'll let you go you get stay down. On, yep. Stay over there. Oh, Rob, yeah, serve so over here. Here, here the, we go. I'll, point. I'm, in, I'm in play. Here we go. Dave, that's a nice play over there. Thank you, buddy. Jeff, you're up. Okay, I'm up, I'm up. There we go. You know, you're learning, we're learning, but we have the best out here teaching. So this Not is good. Just throw a one, ball One, one, one. Here we go. That one's back over there. Oh, oh and I was in the okay. kitchen. I was a little. So, folks, Talk the to red us. area, you are not allowed to volley the ball in pickleball. That is the one fun equalizer. My man, Jeff, yes. violated that rule. Okay. So dramatically. I yeah. love the aggressiveness. <laughs> Jeff, you, <laughs> you better be no yeah. taken. Pots, Let the ball pans, bounce. Dishes. Tyler, you're up now. You're up. I'm up. Yeah, there we go. I'm always up, Dave. I know you Come are. Come on. Two, Let's one, make one. this the last point. Who wins this one is... Uh, oh, man. I thought I had a shot at that one. Guys, We uh, do we end it by... Little tap tap. Little paddle tap. We tap the paddle tap. Oh, yeah, what a, a pleasure. In sportsmanship. Wow. So, Dave, the, the paddle tap, that's something yeah, that even the pros you know, we do. We want more Even the pros. Good sportsmanship. All right. Absolutely. Well, thank you. you got to show sportsmanship. Thank you so much, guys. So, we've shown you sportsmanship. We've shown you some of the rules. We've introduced you to the pros, the commissioner, and the world's top play-by-play, -play, man. I feel like we've done a lot to introduce the, port, the sport of pickleball, and uh, I appreciate you guys for being there with us. As always, be sure to keep it tuned right here to KVU, where you learn and you have fun. He's Drew, I'm Tyler. We're here in Dripping Springs at Dreamland where Major League Pickleball will be played this weekend. And Drew, you're an official, so some fans may say it's your fault during a match, but we've got to talk faults. Faults are very common. I don't think these would be a surprise to anybody. Common faults would be a ball hit into the net that does not clear to the other side, a ball that lands outside the boundary lines. And if a ball hits a player on the other side of the court while that ball is live, Anywhere besides his paddle or his paddle hand, that would also be a fault on that team. Dreamland busy getting ready for Major League Pickleball this weekend. We're learning about the new sport, the fastest growing sport in the world. Drew is an official, and Drew, one of the core parts of this growing sport is called dinking. Correct. Dinking is a term you'll hear in pickleball quite frequently. It's basically a very soft, unattackable shot. And the higher levels you get up in pickleball, you will see the players rapidly get up to the non-volley zone line and engage in long dink rallies, which are shots that are not attackable. And they're basically waiting for a mistake to be made, a ball popped up too high, uh, and then the attack starts and the game gets really fast and furious. Yeah, I've, I've heard the phrase dink and dunk. I wonder if, if that has anything to do with that phrase. Who, who knows, but we, we dunked once out there. Yes, we did. We, we did not go home empty-handed. No, didn't win the game, but won a point. Yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good that's about all, that. All, that's all that matters. Yeah, and we're not really going to spend too much time talking about when I was all up in the kitchen. Y'all know my game day grilling <laughs> segments. I love cooking, so it's it's not. It was natural that yeah, you were in the kitchen. Yeah, it was natural. It was natural. It felt good. I yeah. just left with no pulled pork this time, which <laughs> does not feel good. Guys, we had a whole lot of fun out there. As you can see, the paddles are still in our hands. We're going to hop back on the court, and hopefully you'll join us one of these days. Thanks for joining us today.